Oh, hi again. Today I did two videos, but it's not going to be online at the same time. So you probably watched my other video that I did today about the wiring in the shack. But this one is about building yourself a boom mic for your radio. In my case, it's for my TS-2000. I didn't want any mic on the desk and maybe I'm going to do another one for my DF4 ohm as well but for now let me show you all the things that you need to be able to build a boom mic microphone like this so what I did got the boom mic got a shock mount already had those Behringer microphone that I'm going to show you all that you know a, a little bit further on where to get it as well and for hunt for less than 100 bucks you can build yourself a boom microphone like this with a shock mount and a PTT switch that I have here for the TS-2000. So let me show you, hold on a second, VA2PD testing. So as you can see it is transmit, hold on, I'm going to play with the focus. Okay, you're going to see better. There again, VA2PD testing. So as you can see, I use this as a PTT switch and the boom mic is over here and I can get it out of the way, the wire as well. So I just do this like this. I have the same kit, well similar kit with a high microphone on the other side for my TS-990. So let's start with the project showing you where, I got the, where to get the parts and where to start and how to do it. So this can be done for almost any radio. Uh, for I ICOM, you have to check out. You need a capacitor uh, uh, in order in, in line with the mic pin, I believe. Uh, but uh, you look in your radio and you will find all the information over the internet. But for, all, for the Kenwood and Yezu radio, uh, it's not a problem. It's just straight into the XLR. And uh, so let's start showing the parts. Okay, now go to Amazon. You can go to Amazon.com or in my case, it's Amazon.ca and look for newer boom arm. Actually, newer has two E in the beginning. You were like this. And look for the boom mic that has the integrated XLR cable like this one, but not with this shock mount because this is not the type of microphone I'm going to use. Oh, usually those type of microphone use minus 48 phantom power. So you don't want that on your radio. So this is the correct model okay so and it's about $25 Canadian and uh, this is pretty cheap it has free shipping so in US it's probably $120 and they are very good if you want a longer one you can take any one you like but uh, this one is uh, the one I have then you look for a shock mount because the mic we're going to use is like a singer mic and uh, you need a smaller shock mount. The shock mount will prevent you when you hit the table to have the vibration goes into your microphone while you're having a QSO. So that's very important. At least it is for me. So this is a shock mount. You can find some cheaper one on eBay, but this one is will do the job fine. And eBay just sometimes it take longer to, to receive the units. So via Amazon, it's sometimes better. So... I'll let you decide that. So that's the shock mount. Okay, now let's look for a microphone. I strongly suggest the Behringer XM1800S. This box has three microphones for under $50 USD. It's all metal. They are, they are not sensible to RF. You can use an amplifier with those. I've been using those for years and a lot of amps in my region as well. So I recommend this, but any XLR microphone uh, that you can have cardio uh, like this uh, can be used on your radio and uh, you can use a high microphone or whatever, but I'm just showing you the cheapest way you can have the boom mic in your shack with a PTT switch. So now let's look for a momentary switch, which is a switch when you push the button, it is on. So that's what you're looking for. I strongly suggest to go to your electronic store locally and find a switch that will fit into an XLR connector. You will see later on in the video what I mean about this. Because uh, when you can buy different ones, they're not very expensive. There's some cheaper ones on eBay as well. Uh, but that's the same and maybe you won't receive it uh, uh, you know, uh, as quick. But uh, 
maybe it's better to go to your local electronic store to find the correct one but I'll let you decide that maybe you have some in your box already in your junk box <laughs> I use the RCA cable air uh, which is our monster they are expensive don't, but don't don't buy this one if you, I'm just showing you what I have you can buy you know the cheapest one if you want but the monster one are very well shilled why I use those I bought a liquidation like three dollars each so that's why I have a lot of those at home and then you need the connector for your microphone in my case it's an eight pin round like this uh, they are a lot cheaper on ebay so i'll let you decide as well but i had one in my stock as well so i use that one so now uh, depending on your mic you need to do the correct pinout you can find over the internet the pinout you need for your radio use print the manual page and just write the diagram make sure you have the correct connection that's what i did what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, the XLR cable to connect the mic. I don't want too much wire in front uh, of the mic, uh, uh, of the radio. So I'm going to use the PTT in the back of the radio. There is no on the TS-2000 connector for the PTT. So I will use the accessory connector. Now, remove the test your switch with a continuity uh, meter. And remove the XLR connector. We're going to use this xlr connector at this end the male one we're going to use the connector case to do the ptt switch and we'll put like this okay it's not it's fit perfectly but if you want it to be a tight fit we'll just put some tape later on you'll see and there cut the rca mic you can use you know different type of ptt cable if you want depending what you want but i'm going to use uh the uh, rca connector make sure you have a very small tips on your soldering iron this is very important because if you and it make sure it can be warm enough so you won't melt the plastic while soldering the pins there's very small pins i use an rca that i already added that in my giant rca female that i will use on the accessory port of the ts2000 to get the ptt ptt and the ptt ground this I'm going to use and then I'm going to plug my my RCA PTT switch into it. Okay, so make sure you have the correct pin out as I mentioned. Then when you get the uh, small connector, what you need to do is to put some leads into it first and then make sure you put the connector before you solder your, <laughs> your pin because uh, then you will have to remove to do it again. So make sure you put some leads on the wire first and some leads into the small holes of the pins and then it you will have just to warm the pin to solder the wire into it that is the best way to do it make it as quick as possible so you won't melt the pin into the plastic that's very important to do a very good job there you see i'm sometimes can be tough and uh i think it's not very good for that so <laughs> it's moving a lot but anyway did the job so you solder that and then you blow on it make sure if you move the, the wire too quick it will get out of the pin so uh, and make sure you cool it down first and then you will have your PTT switch built like this now you put your tape some electrical tape around the PTT switch and then it will have a very very press and tight fit into the XLR I have one I did a few years ago never came out so that's the way to do it that's why you need to to buy the correct size of the momentary switch then you have a good let's see good ptt switch in your end like i'm showing here now let's do the microphone connection just trip uh, at least like five five eight of an inch the wire and then just uh, turn the shield together and remove the aluminum foil to the rubber Make sure you remove it completely and then you can skin the wire, put some leads on it as well. And uh, if you want the correct connection for your microphone and radio, just look on the internet. You will find it for sure and it will, you will find a diagram and then do the correct pin out. Have it the wire with you. Make sure that you have the correct pin because what's the pin that you have in your manual, it shows you the, uh, the radio pin out in front of the radio and the 
connector is like a mirror so you need to have the correct pin make sure use your your multimeter to make sure you have the correct pin with your xlr connector and then just build the just put back the connector like this and you're done so now let's test the ptt okay as you can see very easy and it worked well well thank you for watching hope you like this video as well do a thumbs up if you like it please subscribe support new project right here and uh, stay tuned for more video 73